Hi friends, thanks for joining me today. My name is Stormy Capillary and I'm really grateful that you are here and hopefully this brings you and your family a little joy today. We're going to be doing a simple tutorial. It's going to be based on the letter Q, which says qua, 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 like the queen bee. You can use things that you have around the house, markers, crayons, pastels, colored pencils, um, paint, anything really you have available will work. And we're gonna be using um, simple shapes in order to walk you through this tutorial. I'd like to say thank you to those of you that have been reaching out to my um, family and I. Uh, usually I have two of my sons here with me doing art as well, but at the moment they are doing another really fun activity. Um, so I'd like to thank Melissa, Grace, Kathy, and Pat for your most recent um, a share as far as the in time you've enjoyed with doing all of these tutorials and we really do appreciate the connection that we're developing to people in the community even beyond our own small community that we live in but also the online community so um go ahead and let's get ready to draw i'll share what i'm grateful for i like to start every video with that usually i have my sons here to do that as well but um, i can speak for myself that i'm extremely grateful for being able to have these um, experiences to be able to share something that i enjoy with my family with um, other families so thank you um, please look for in the um, description section of this youtube video a link to our facebook page and there you can share pictures of your artwork as well and we really do enjoy getting those as well as some people have added in things that they're grateful for which we really appreciate that too so I am wearing a shirt in spirit of what we're doing today. It says, be kind, and I try to live by that motto and um, teach my students and my own children um, how important it is to be kind. So we appreciate kindness in all. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, we are going to first start with the straight line across the bottom of the crown, which is a horizontal line that's on a slight incline. If you start on the left and move to the right, I don't have my paper up yet, so let's go ahead and get that up there too. And let's go ahead and do a vertical line across the paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here and go across. And next I'm going to position my eyes. So those are two circular or oval um, shapes for the eyes. Let's go ahead and do that. One and two. And then inside the eyes I'm going to draw two more circles, a little bit smaller. And I'm not going to color those in, but I am going to color in the outside black. So some fun fact we heard about um, bees, because I had my sons research this with me, so they all learned as well, um, is that there's three um, types of bees, and we'll get into each different type, but the first I'd like to talk about is the queen bee, which is the bee that we're drawing, and most cases, there's only one queen bee in a hive, um, and she lays all of the eggs, and also is about the size of a um, paper clip, which I thought was pretty interesting. They're pretty small, um, or pretty big actually. That's what I was thinking, is a small paper clip is pretty big for a bee. And they live up to five years, which seems like a pretty long time. In another video, we were researching rabbits, and they live up to three to five years, the average cottontail rabbit. So that means bees live longer than cottontail rabbits, which is kind of amazing. All right, so next we're gonna do the U shape for the um, head and the chin, it's almost like a circle that's not completed. So if you can see that, it's like a big mouth on a smiley face. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna start at the corner of the bottom line that we drew, and we're gonna connect it to the other corner. So we'll go ahead and go around and up, just like that. And next we're gonna go ahead and do the face, the mouth of the um, B. I'm going to move this a little closer and it's going to be the same shape. It's going to be a U shape and then on top of it we're going to do another little U shape for the top of the mouth, the upper lip. So let's do the bottom lip. It's a U shape 
and then the upper lip is the same thing. It's going to connect one corner to the other of the mouth, but it's going to be a little less shallow. Makes it look like it's smiling. And then a happy bee always has this little poochy cheek. So I'm going to draw a diagonal and a diagonal line there to give him a little bit more of a smile, right? So after that, I'm going to go ahead and give him his um, body. So it's the same thing, it's an incomplete circle, right? So you're gonna go from right underneath one eye on the chin line, a U, and come up underneath the other one, just like that. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? So we're gonna go find the eye, the chin, we're gonna go ahead and go down and around and then back up and you can choose how many sections of the tummy you would like by adding more or less uh, lines to separate the sections i'm going to do one two three sections so i'm going to do three um, almost like the mouth smiley face um, to connect both sides one two and look, it made three sections. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and do the stinger, which is an upside down triangle. It's really simple. So just go one line and then the other line, right? So now we have a stinger and our B is becoming more real. Let's go ahead and do a C shape for the wing. If you've noticed in this character of a queen bee, I gave him her two large wings and then two small ones. So it's gonna be a C shape around and then another small C shape. And then we're gonna do the reverse on the other side, so a backwards C, okay? So let's go ahead and start in between the top line and the chin and do a C shape and then a small C shape. And then on the other side, it's backwards, right? Backwards C shape and then a small C shape. I like to give it a little bit more um, detail, so I add a little line in the middle of my wings. And now let's go ahead and I think we're ready for the eyelashes. So I like to do three on each side, kind of like a shallow U. One, two, three, one, two, three. Makes it a little bit more feminine, more of a character of a girl. And now we're gonna go ahead and do uh, diagonal lines coming out of the crown, and that's gonna make for the edges of the crown, right? So let's go ahead and do that. One diagonal line, another diagonal line, and then in the middle, I'm going to put a little dot, and that's gonna be my marker to help me connect the U shape for the crown. So one U, and the other U. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do another parallel line going across, just to give it a little bit more detail. You can add stars or dots or anything you'd like in the crown to give it a little bit more personality. I'm gonna add now the um, arcing lines for the antenna. And then I added a little buzzy bee friend um, in the corner, and you can't see that because of the angle, so let's turn it a little bit. And it's a buzzy bee friend in the corner, and um, that's my worker bee. So let's go ahead and first give a dotted line to show where she's been, or he's been. No, it's a girl, worker bees. And now I'm gonna do a sideways raindrop the bottom end is going to be the stinger, and then I'm going to do sideways U's to give them a body. And this B is going to have two eyes, two dots, and a round, an oval mouth like he's surprised. And now I'm going to give him two wings, which is one flower petal and a smaller flower petal. And I'll give him some antennas. And then after that, we'll go ahead and get started on our watercolor or crayons or markers or pastels whatever you have available okay let me go ahead and scoot this back just a little bit and i'll share with you some techniques too that i use when i am um, using watercolor too okay 
So the first thing I would like to do is, especially um, when I'm working vertically like this, is go top to bottom if I can. And I also like to start with the lighter colors and then move to the darker colors. That helps me to um, control and be able to see the lighter colors and also add layers. Um, but for the sake of this, I'm going to first take care of the B and I'm gonna start with the, um, I like to keep my paintbrush the same colors um, as often as I can without rinsing. So I'm gonna start with a crown, which is a yellow and orange, or yellow and red color to make the golden, because I don't have a golden um, watercolor, and so I just make my colors sometimes by mixing them. So I know that if I use this bright yellow and this red, that I can achieve not just an orange color, but kind of like a golden -y orange color. And so I just use strokes to go through. And if you go outside the lines, that's okay. I kind of like that technique. So sometimes I even intentionally go outside the lines. This would make a beautiful card for someone you love that you miss, you're thinking of, or you care about. It's a perfect spring card as well. If you were to cut this page in half, fold it, work on one of the folded sides, that would easily become um, a card too. So there is my crown. I'm now going to, I'm done with that color, so I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna get a smaller brush to do the um, yellow for the bright bumblebee up top, or worker bee, I should say. And I wanna make sure I don't have too much water because it will start to, um, to run on me and then I'm gonna go ahead and find the yellow spots on the bee that I want to the queen bee I want to color in just like that and I like to respect my brushes I don't go back and forth really hard because they might get ruined and I don't want I want to avoid that I want them to last as long as they possibly can and um, so groups of bees are called swarms or colonies so that was an interesting fact that we learned. And they store their honey and their pollen throughout the winter and they eat that and they um, stay in their hive all cuddled up together to stay warm and to survive the winter time. And I thought that was really neat information too. So what bees do for us is they provide us with honey, they provide us with, we can make wax out of, um, what they um, create as well. And really they're useful as far as pollinating uh, plants. We wouldn't have a lot of plants that we have if we didn't have bees to pollinate them. I'm going to now figure out how I'm gonna make gray. And I wonder, I don't have white, but I do know with watercolor I can lighten up black if I add lots of water to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the color, this, uh, darker color so that my bee doesn't blend into my white paper. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna get just a little bit of black and I'm gonna add a lot of water to it. And then it becomes almost like a little bit of a stain, right? I'm gonna make sure I don't have too much water on my brush because if I do, it will run down the paper. Now, one thing I like to do too is if I'm working in a space like this, and I know that I don't want it to run, I'll start at the top so that gravity can show me how much extra paint I have on my paintbrush. And I have time to catch it with either my paintbrush, all the extra water dripping, or with a napkin that I have nearby. So when this uh, dries, it'll look a little bit darker as well. It will definitely serve its purpose, which is I would like the wings to not blend in with the white paper. I like them to stand out a little bit. As well as the head. I'm going to avoid the mouth and the um, pupils because I don't want those to be dark colors. You see, once again, I'm starting at the top and then I'm working my way down. To give my si myself some time to catch any water that might drip down my paper. So I learned that the worker bees forage for the food. So the pollen and nectar from the flowers 
and they build and protect the hive. So they're very busy. They do most of the work. They clean and they circulate the air by flapping their, um, beating their wings. And they perform many other uh, uh, functions. So they contribute a lot more to um, the hive. There's another type of bee. Remember I said there's three. The other one's a drone bee. And the drone bee um, is the male bees. And they are not around during the winter. They're only down around during the um, time of year when um, they're needed. And let's see, what else are we gonna do here? We're gonna do a little bit of staining in the top as well for the antennas. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna pick up my black marker and I'm going to color in. I forgot to do that earlier. And I just like to mention that these tutorials are to give you ideas. You do not need to follow along step by step. Art is something expressive and unique to everybody. So really I give you some ideas perhaps, and then you can create the land or the setting that the subject is in. The subject in this case is the bee. So really your bee could be flying through a field. Your bee could be like Kalani made this one. His bee is, um, scared of this little ant because we had a conversation about how he's not really scared of bees but he's afraid of ants so he drew that um really you can put your bee in any kind of environment it can be flying over a lake it could be in a, um, a jungle you could really create anything and so these are just some ideas so now i'm going to do the tummy line which is a little bit darker and i'm going to use a thicker brush so that I don't have to spend as much time. And I wanna make sure that I don't have too much water on it because if this color runs, it's really hard to remove. You can always remove paint by adding additional water and um, to your paper and blotting it, but the amount of watercolor that you can get off is still limited because it does stain the paper a little bit. So there we go. And now I'm going to um, invite you to put your uh, bee in any kind of environment you'd like to put it in. I'm going to show you how I make these easy plants um, that I just use a simple tool. It's a paintbrush and I use it at a certain angle and it easily um, transfers over into these beautiful plants. So um, I use my lightest color first, which is going to be yellow and I scatter, holding my paintbrush upside down, I scatter, not with too much water, because once again, I'm working vertically. It makes it challenging. But I place upside down. You won't be able to see probably the yellow too well from the video, but as I fill it in, you'll get the picture. So next is I'm going to use some orange and red combined because that's the color I'd like to have. And I really use paint, just these are kids paint sets. I have other paint that I use for my um, art that I, um, I spend a lot more time on. And these kid paint sets work perfectly fine for any uh, home activity. So then I just go through and I thicken it up a bit and I might even go through with a dry paintbrush to pick up some of the um, excess water. But these make beautiful cards too. I think I'm gonna do a video where I just make a variety of cards, really simple and really fast. Um, Cause I've had some people asking about um, the watercolor cards that I've made in other tutorials that have been um, time lapse, so they've been really fast videos on how to do it. Because sometimes all you have to do is see someone place their paintbrush a certain way or paint, um, use different tools, and then it's an aha moment like, oh my gosh, I didn't think of that, but I could totally use that technique in order to create something wonderful to share with other people or to keep for myself. So I just am sporadically placing um, 
And I like when my paintbrush runs out of paint because then it gives it a different look, um, a different shade of whatever color I'm adding. So slowly but surely, I am, and I'll bring this up close so you can see. I'm adding little flowers. And eventually, I'll add leaves. Um, it looks somewhat like a stamp. If you let the um, paint run out on your paintbrush, it begins to look like a stamp, which I like that as well. Uh, so this now I want to go in with a darker purple to give a little bit of detail. And then after that, I will probably go through with my brown and draw a um, stem. So I have my jokes for you. Okay, are you ready? So what does the queen bee say to a naughty bee? Be high, be yourself. I thought that was pretty funny. And then the other one is, what do you call a bee you cannot understand? And the answer to that is a mumble bee because they mumble and you can't understand them. I thought that was pretty funny too. So let's get serious for a minute. We need bees. We need to protect our bees. We need to uh, respect them and appreciate, and if we appreciate them, that's just another thing that we get to be grateful for, right? Our bees. Without bees, plants wouldn't become pollinated and we require that in order for plants to grow, mature, and flourish. In addition, we get fruits and vegetables from, well, specifically fruit from pollination. And um, without that, we wouldn't have a lot of the beautiful and delicious and, nutri and nutritious foods that we do have. So really when you see a bee, yes, they have stingers and those are to protect themselves, but also the beauty in them is really something to appreciate. And I think right now we could use a lot of appreciation for and find beauty in the things that we're surrounded with in nature. And this is really a beautiful time of year. I love spring. So, um, so a majority of the plants require pollination. So having bees, um, besides them just being beautiful creatures, uh, having them because they help our, our world and they're a part of it. So I just stream through lines of a darker color. This color is a brown and a black mixed together to look like um, stems for the plants to grow on, right? And um, I am done with that, I think, for right now. If you would like to share your pictures, that would be so wonderful. You can go to our Facebook page, and once again, the link is in the comments, and I'll look forward to seeing all of the fun art that you are doing along with us in our home. So thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.